Does living the life of crime or trying to make it on the next episode of Cops in Your RV sound like a fun time to you? Well, hang on, because today we're talking about seven RV laws you might be breaking that you probably didn't even know existed. Welcome back to the Camping Loop. Listen, I'm no Johnny Law, certainly not a lawyer, but I do know that these may vary a little bit depending on the county or the state that you're living in. So obviously always check your local jurisdictions before you listen to my advice. And let me know down in the comments below if you ended up in the clinker for any of these or not. Number one, driving with a broken or a missing sewer cap. Now you're probably thinking, a sewer cap, that's it? I thought we were gonna do a high-speed chase or some undercover detective work. Well, let me tell you, that little piece of plastic right there holds more secrets than my Aunt Sheila after a bottle of wine. Did you know that driving with a missing or leaking cap can get you into legal hot water? If you have that cap off or you forgot to put it on tight and the contents of your waste tank decide to go on a road trip themselves, congratulations, you just became an environmental hazard. You could be in for a hefty fine, folks, and I am talking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Number two, not crossing your tow chains. Yep, those often overlooked chains holding your life together, quite literally, could land you in a heap of trouble. Now, crossing your tow chains could actually save your rig from a disastrous ending. Uh, when you crisscross them, they kind of become a cradle and catch your trailer in the event that it ever becomes disconnected. Now again, the laws do vary from state to state, and there are some arguments out there like, what if the chains are both coming from the same central point on the trailer? Well, the best I guess I can say to this is cross them anyway. It's safer, and it might save you a hefty fine, depending on where you're traveling. Number three, and we see this one all the time, being overweight, and I'm not talking about my waistline. Now, every RV sold comes with a gross vehicle weight rating, so GBWR, I guess it would be. Uh, and what that is, is the maximum weight that the RV can hold, cargo it can hold, including its own weight, the people inside, any water you're carrying, propane, batteries, and all your gear. And it's very common for people to exceed this without even realizing it. Another thing to consider, obviously, is your tongue weight or how much weight is actually pushing down on the hitch of the tow vehicle. Now, ideally, you want your tongue weight somewhere between 10 and 15% of the total weight of the trailer. And believe it or not, a whopping 66% of people are typically over. Now remember, check your RV and your vehicle specs before hitting the road and packing it to the brim. That way, you're going to avoid the fine, have a safer trip, and it wouldn't be a bad idea to pull into one of them there fancy truck scales and get an idea where you're at. Number four, and definitely my favorite, no booze in the state parks. Now I know, calm down, but here where we're at in New York, there are some state parks where they don't let you crack a cold one while you're sitting around the fire. Matter of fact, before you head to your next RV destination, you might want to do your homework and look up the park regulations. Even if some of the state parks do allow booze, they still have regulations on like what kind, as far as like no glass bottles, no beer balls, no beer kegs, things like that. Number five, driving on the parkway or other specific roads. Now you might be thinking, what's the big deal, right? Just another big, beautiful road for me to drive on. Wrong. Parkways are like the VIP of highway section, and most of them have low bridges, low clearance, and no commercial traffic allowed. Now, obviously, parkways aren't the only places that have limited RV access. Most, if not all states, are gonna have weight and height restrictions that you're gonna need to be aware of. For example, if you guys have a Class A motorhome that's weighing in at 10 or 12,000 pounds, there's probably a lot of restrictions on those roads as far as bridges and clearances that you need to know about. If you get caught driving on them, you're going to face a hefty fine and possibly have your rig towed. Number six, driving with your propane on. Now here's the kicker. There's a lot of folks out there that think it's perfectly fine and safe to drive around with their propane on, maybe using it to power something like their fridge. Well, here in New York, I can tell you it's a big no-no to drive or even tow your rig with the propane system still active. Now, obviously, propane is highly flammable, and one small leak could spell a big boom or disaster. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not trying to have my camping trip on national news. Now, we always drive with our propane off. If you need to, pack a cooler. After all, it's the safest way to make sure you actually get to your destination and not blasting off into space somewhere. Number seven, overnight parking or boondocking somewhere. 
Now picture this guys, it's midnight, you've been traveling all day, you're tired, and the only thing keeping you awake is the questionable gas station coffee. And there you see it, bam, a Walmart. It's the beacon of cheap snacks and that thing that you don't really need but you can't resist buying anywhere. And if you decide to park there overnight, be careful, you might be breaking the law. Not all Walmarts or even rest areas allow overnight parking, and some of them might not even have a sign warning you about it. Now there's some super friendly RV cities out there, and other ones might impose a hefty fine. So before you guys venture in and camp at the wild wonders of the Walmart parking lot, or really venture anywhere else, remember these RV laws. Or don't, just keep doing what you're doing until somebody blows you in. Either way, we're in this crazy RV thing together. Now don't forget to drop a comment down below on some of the laws you guys might have broken. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that notification bell. As always, we appreciate you guys watching, and we will catch you in the next one.